My final year in junior school, when I was about 12, saw me uh, attending another new school in another new town. And this time I really reinvented myself when I arrived here. The previous four years um, had not been a pleasant experience. Um, I didn't enjoy school at all. My parents pointed out, apparently, that I was being bullied. I didn't notice, but looking back, yeah, they're right, I was being bullied. Um, I remember that in those four years, um, at break time, lunch time, all the kids would be in the yard, and they would be playing soccer, and there would be two kids who would come out as captains and they would choose their teams and I was always the last kid to get picked. It suited me. I didn't like soccer. I never did and I don't still. Um, so I went to this new school again in another town again and it really was a chance to recreate who I was. But I didn't recreate who I was. I just reinforced who I was. Um, which was a kid who was different. I was always different. And to that new school, I don't know where I got it from, but I managed to get my hands on a proper, authentic American football. And I brought that ball with me every day to my new school. And now, at yard time, when all the kids would be in the yard, it was me who was the cool guy leading the game because it was my ball and I was the instigator for all of this. So I really got all the kids in that school together, all of us playing, most of us, American football, our version of it, in the yard at break time. So, yeah. Um, Exclusion is is bullying, like, you know, by just ignoring somebody. I didn't realize, but now I do, I see that. Um, and, yeah. But, you know what, it didn't really bother me at all, um, how I was treated at the previous school. Um, I just... I just got through it, you know? You just get through it. You, you don't care, eventually. You just don't care, you stop caring. Um, my best friend at that school was, um, he was probably the poorest kid one of in town, and I was one of the richest kids in town. And he was my best friend, and we used to BMX a lot. Um, so yeah, so that was that. Um, I don't stay in touch with anybody from, certainly not from the four-year school, um, and I'm in touch with one guy occasionally from this new school that I came to for the final year of, of junior school, um, and it was really revelatory for me um, to see how nice people can be when they don't have a false agenda of hate. Why did those kids hate me in that other school? Because I lived in the biggest house in town and my dad had the biggest job probably. Yeah, that probably had something to do with it. Um, but that wasn't my doing. That wasn't my fault. That was nothing to do with me. I'm Mike, I have, I'm, I'm just me. So yeah, so be nice to people in school and include them. Um, because everybody is worth it and everybody is deserved of respect and inclusion. Um, but those days were days like that. It was a time when most schools were single sex schools and so it was just all the boys and all the girls um, and they didn't know what they were doing, I mean, what kids do. Um, 
but you just get one bad egg and it spreads and you can have a lot of bad eggs um, with, with a little bit of time. American football was also my introduction to rugby um, and I didn't come across rugby for another three years, hi Bo, um, until four years even in senior school and I already knew how dangerous these games were, American football and rugby um, and I have another video somewhere about that I think and I, I, uh, I chose to refuse rugby to play it in senior school when I got to that point. Um, and refusal, I have learned, is a very powerful tool. You don't have to do anything. You just have to refuse to do something. Um, yeah, I've refused many things to my benefit in my life. One of the best ones was, well, there's a lot of good ones. Um, I refused to do history also later in high school. It was obligatory, but I saw what they were teaching me and I really didn't like it. I didn't like their truths because I didn't think all their truths were much truths. Some of them were, some of them half truths, but I refused history. I think I could have been the only kid in the country who refused to do this obligatory junior school exam. Um, and instead I taught myself Italian. Well, my Italian friends will tell me I don't really speak Italian, but I think I speak a bit of Italian, I understand a bit. So that's what I did instead of doing history. I refused to do it. Um, I refused to take drugs when doctors and psychiatrists and people over my life wanted to prescribe me drugs. I refused them. And I did just fine without them. So refusal is a very powerful thing if you're prepared to stand by your refusal. I got onto um, a drug for to treat my multiple sclerosis more than 10 years ago, I think, now. Um, and I got that by refusing all other alternatives except one, the one that I wanted. And I stuck with it. And you know what happened? Yeah, that's right. They gave me the drug. They had to, to, to make special arrangements to do that because the drug was still in clinical trials at the time. They didn't know how I identified the drug. I go researching, I'm good at researching things. So I did, and they gave it to me um, by refusing. And in the face of all medics and nurses um, who were telling me, you're wrong, you're stupid, you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. But guess what? They were wrong and I was right. So when you've got something going, stick with it. And make sure you've got all your I's dotted and your T's crossed, and you should have success. Have a great day, thanks for watching.